Hello, welcome. Here again on a Thursday night uh, with another live message called Spiritual Blockage. We're going to talk tonight about the flow of the Holy Spirit, how to flow in the Holy Spirit, how to walk in the Spirit without hindrances. So tonight we're going to talk about blockage. We're going to talk about what is it that blocks us, that hinders us from moving and flowing in the Spirit as we should. All right. Um, I've, obviously, I've had many hindrances in my life. I was delivered from addiction. I was delivered from severe depression, anxiety, and many other things. And Jesus delivered me. Um, but there's also hindrances. There's also the enemy's tactics, strategies, and plans that are launched out there to assault my life, to attack me. Um, that in these things, the Lord, the Lord wants to pull down the strongholds, but the enemy wants to form strongholds by finding an entry point. We talk about this time and time again, but I want to teach you, I want to impart something to you tonight that you would learn how to flow in the Spirit better. Uh, there's an art, I truly believe there's an art to staying in the Spirit. Because if you stay in the Spirit, uh, miraculous things happen. The supernatural uh, just comes to be. The supernatural takes place in our lives and there are manifestations that are produced out of that. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this message. I thank you for giving me this message. I thank you, Lord, for those who are going to watch it, that are going to receive impart impartation and revelation, Lord. May they receive from your word tonight. May they receive from your anointing, Father, your Holy Spirit that is released, that moves through this message tonight, Lord. Help me to speak your words and not my own. Help me to speak your words, Holy Spirit, Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We lift up your holy name tonight, Lord. Lord, touch hearts. Touch those who don't know you. Draw them unto yourself tonight, Father. Bring the backsliders back home and break the chains of bondage. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we ask these things. Amen. So we're, uh, we're going to look at Ephesians 4.30 to begin. That's going to be our key verse tonight, Ephesians 4.30. So let's turn there. Ephesians 4.30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So this verse says we are sealed as believers once we choose to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God seals us with the Holy Spirit. He sets us apart and marks us as His own. He sets us apart and marks us as His own. When we receive salvation, when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are marked. We are marked vessels for use by God, by the Holy Spirit. We were also marked as targets for the enemy. Uh, a lot of people leave that part out. I wish somebody would have warned me of the war that I was walking into when I received Jesus. I was told how good it was going to be <laughs> when I first got saved. I was told of all the blessings, all the benefits. The benefits package was, was you know, uh, shared with me. But I wasn't told about the war I was walking into with devils, with uh, the enemy and his plans for my life. Okay, the God has a plan for your life, but the devil has a plan for your life. Let's submit to the Holy Spirit that we may walk in the perfect will and the perfect plan that God has for our lives. Hallelujah. So this verse also warns us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Here are some things that can cause us to grieve or quench the Spirit. And this is just a few that I'm going to name uh, just off the top of my head. And I have a few written down here. Okay. Lust, anger, pride, greed, envy, bitterness, resentment, indifference, doubt, and unbelief, to name a few. There are many sins... And strongholds, you know, sin begins as a seed that is planted within our hearts. And over time, that thing becomes a big old tree, a plant that has taken root within our spirit, within our heart. And it becomes a stronghold. It, be it becomes a place for the enemy to dwell. But we need to uproot that thing. And we need to make room for the Holy Spirit, for the glory of God to come in and bring us peace and freedom, liberty and joy. 
Yes, hallelujah. Kita ramba bashito. Sanda rabashi. Now let's take a look at John 7.38. Let's turn to John 7.38 together. Give you a minute to get there. Again, John 7.38. says this, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So, what are we getting at here when we're talking about rivers of living water will flow from those who believe in Jesus? This is the flow of the Spirit we must keep going. We must keep that flow moving. We must walk in the Spirit. Not allowing sin to stop us up. Anybody who's a plumber or knows a plumber knows that that plumber has to go in when they're called to, to uh, dissolve or get rid of the blockages that are in the pipes. Okay, there's, it's almost like there's a pipe running through us, figuratively, symbolically, we're speaking here. There's a flow of the rivers of living water uh, that come by the power of the Holy Spirit that are the Holy Spirit moving through us. If you've never experienced that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to get baptized in the Holy Spirit at the end of this live broadcast. Hallelujah. I believe you need to get saved, you need to get healed, you need to get delivered, but you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is going to empower you to do the work of the Lord, and it's going to empower you to be edified day by day. So anyway, I'm getting off topic here. We need to flow in the Spirit. Okay, and I'm trying to teach you, to instruct you on how to do that. First, we need to get rid of the hindrances and blockages. So not only can these things cause us to grieve the Spirit, but they can cause strongholds to be formed in us. Like I said, it starts with a seed. Sin starts with a seed, but eventually builds a stronghold. The enemy builds a stronghold through that sin, through that entry point. If we give the enemy a foothold, it can easily become a stronghold. Remember that phrase. If we give the enemy a foothold, it can easily become a stronghold. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. These scriptures say, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for the necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So from these scriptures, we find out a few things that are important and help us to understand what pleases the Spirit of God. If we want to please God, we need to know the scriptures. We need to know the commandments. We, we, we need to know the heart of God, the love of Christ. And we need to know how to please Him. All right, Anyone who has a master, anyone who has a Lord, anyone who has a boss even, you know, thinking about in our everyday lives, we all have a boss. We all have someone to answer to. Um, and if you have a boss, if you have someone that is in charge of, uh, of your work, okay, or someone that is, that is in authority over you, you need to know how to please them, right? So we need to know how to please God. We've already started this lesson with verse 30, but let's also dig into the other two verses. Verse 29 makes it clear that we have to watch how we speak. We are supposed to edify or build others up with our speech. This way we're imparting grace. All right, Too, e too easily and too often uh, we tear each other down with our words. In the world and in the body of Christ, we tear each other down. We destroy one another with our tongue. The tongue has the power of life and death within it. It contains the power of life and of death. We want to build up. We don't want to tear down. We need to love one another in the body. Love one another. Jesus said you will, he will know or people will know that you are his disciples by the way you love one another. Let's remember that. Verse 31 points out bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil 
speaking. There's our, there's our speech again. There's our words again. This scripture is getting at what we speak. What we speak, we can speak blessing or curses. We can tear down or we can build. We need to remember that. In verse 32, verse 32 we're told to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave us. So I want us all to understand that God intends for every one of us to be filled with all the fullness of God. Jesus died, resurrected, and ascended that he could give us the comforter, the advocate, the instructor, and the life-giving spirit. The Holy Spirit is all these things. Hallelujah. Sindo rambosho bayandarabashe pokonto. Oh, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit fills us. The Holy Spirit empowers us. The Holy Spirit operates in our lives. And we flow. We move in Him. Have your being in the Holy Spirit. Get to know Him. Just take a little time out of each day. Just sit there for five minutes a day. And just say, Jesus, I want to know you better. Speak to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want to know you better. Holy Spirit, I want you to come. Invite the Holy Spirit into your day each day. Invite the Holy Spirit into your ministry. Say, Holy Spirit, I want you to run my ministry. I don't want to be solely the pastor of this ministry. The good shepherd is the true pastor. The good shepherd is the good pastor that's going to take care of the sheep. He's only living, he's living inside of me, using me as a vessel. He's using me to feed the sheep. Just as Jesus spoke to Peter, he said, feed my sheep. But we know who the good shepherd is and we know who the Spirit of God is. Invite the Holy Spirit in. Invite him in. Stop doing your own, you know, having your own plan and having your own agenda. If we let the Holy Spirit run our ministries, if we let the Holy Spirit run our families, if we let the Holy Spirit speak to us a fresh word each day, our lives would look completely different. So from my experience, the two things I've seen uh, block people from flowing in the Spirit the most are bitterness and unbelief. And we're going to pray. I'm going to pray with you at the end of this uh, live feed. And we're going to repent. We're going to repent together. Okay, we're going to repent of the things that, the sins that are hindering us, the things that are blocking us from receiving the Holy Spirit in His fullness. Because I want you to know Him. I want you to move in Him. I want you to flow in Him. But let's talk about bitterness and unbelief, which are the two biggest things that I've seen personally stop people from flowing in the Holy Spirit. First, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Which say this, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. So Hebrews 12, 14, and 15 warn us about a root of bitterness. And like I talked about the seed of sin being planted in our hearts and taking root and building a stronghold, this is talking about the same thing, but it's a root of bitterness, which comes through offense. We're offended. Someone says something, does something, betrays us, hurts us, lies to us, and we get offended. Or mocks us, they call us a name, whatever it is, they offend us. There's a resentment. There's bitterness that begins to brew. And a root of bitterness can be so deep, it can last a lifetime. But we can't allow it to grow. And the only solution, the only remedy for bitterness is forgiveness. We are to forgive one another as Christ forgave us. And if he could die on the cross, if he could be mocked, spit on, beaten, and die in such a gory and horrifying way on the cross for those that sinned against him, for those that mocked him and belittled him, as he died on that cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If he could forgive, we can forgive as well. We need the power of the Holy Spirit even for that. 
We need the power of the Holy Spirit to love. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive. To love as Christ loved. To love with the love, the perfect love of God is not natural. It's supernatural. I didn't know what love was until God taught me what love was through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of His Son's love. I want you to know Him today. And the thing about bitterness is that bitterness can creep in uh, when you're not even aware of it, okay? It can be completely uh, covert. A lot of times someone offends us, lies to us, betrays us as I was talking about, or does something to hurt us, and we say we forgive them. We say, oh, I forgave them already. Saying we forgive and actually forgiving are two completely different things. A lot of times a root of bitterness is formed because we don't process the pain and pray through it. All right, get that. Please remember that. We need to process the pain and pray through it. Instead, we brush it under the rug a lot of times and tell ourselves, I'm over it. I forgave them. When we haven't processed the pain and prayed through it. I'm going to say that again. A root of bitterness can develop because we haven't processed it. That root becomes a plant that grows so big it affects the other areas of your life and starts to choke out the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life and walk. This root of bitterness is so big, it becomes so big, it starts again as a seed, becomes a small tree, becomes a, a huge tree, and becomes a tree. You know, I'm, I'm a landscaper. I've done grounds and landscaping work all of my life. I love it as my day job. Um, but the tree... Okay, it's like a tree that encroaches on other plants. It begins to take over the garden. It begins to take over the entire yard to the point where you can't function correctly in your life. You can't, your relationships are affected. Your children are affected. Your marriage is affected. Your walk with God is affected. And the Holy Spirit is cut off. Not that the Holy Spirit isn't living inside of you still, okay? You're still sealed. You still have that deposit of the Holy Spirit, but the flow, Holy Spirit needs to flow. You need to move in the Holy Spirit. It's a completely different thing. To operate in the Holy Spirit and to have the Holy Spirit in you are two different things. I want you to flow in it. But the bitterness uh, that you're allowing in your heart right now, I believe there's people that are going to watch this, that are watching this now, that have bitterness in their heart that has cut the flow of the Holy Spirit off in their lives, and I want to see you move in the Spirit again. I want to see you move in that love that the Lord has for you, that the Lord has for other people uh, moving through you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So now let's see what unbelief does and how it finds its way in as well. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. says this, Beware, brethren, lest there be any, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. These verses talk about an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You see, there's people in the Bible who were shown things, who were shown miracles, who were shown signs and wonders, and had confirmations over and over and over. And we know people like that in our own lives that have seen things. They've seen God show up. But again, they decide to say, you know what, uh, I kind of doubt you know, that that was God. Or maybe they believed at one time, but they begin to fade away because sin, in its deceitfulness, has drawn them away. Or maybe someone has planted a seed of doubt in their heart and they begin to think on the doubt more than they think on the Word of God, more than they think on the things they've already seen, the things they've experienced. If the truth has been revealed to you, if you've seen miracles, if you've seen signs and wonders, if you've seen God show up in your life, don't forget it. Write it down. Look back on your prayer journals. Look back on your journals where you've seen things take place in your life. You need to remember what the Lord has done for you. Take a look behind you. See how far the Lord has brought you. And don't you forget what He's done. Don't you forget. It's so easy to forget as human beings. It's so easy to forget in our natural mindedness. 
we're forgetful beings. We're forgetful uh, people. People are just forgetful in general. Do not forget what the Lord's done for you. So here we're told to encourage one another. We're also warned that the deceitfulness of sin can harden our hearts. This happens when we are led astray uh, by our desires to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Sin changes our view and perspective on life and faith. Once someone loses heart, what, and what someone, once someone's heart is hardened, it takes nothing short of a miracle to soften it. It takes the supernatural love of God. It takes the supernatural power of God to soften a hardened heart. There's a lot of, spirit, uh, a lot of the spirit of unbelief, which is a demon spirit at work in the world. Okay, There's the spirit of the Antichrist. And this is something I'm going to tell you. I say it time and time again. Is The devil doesn't care if you believe in God. He cares if you believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God. That he is the Lamb who was slain for the sins of the world. Because every you know anybody believes they know something's out there, but when you put a name on it, when you define it as Yahweh Elohim, the God of Israel, who has the who has a son, the Son of God Jesus Christ, okay, that's when the enemy starts to get angry. That's when he realizes you have power, you know your authority because you know that the blood is the most powerful substance in this universe. Hallelujah, yes. Some of you are being delivered right now in the name of Jesus. Some of you are being healed right now in the name of Jesus from the anointing that's being unleashed. Hallelujah. I believe that right now. So this spirit, this spirit of unbelief can come on someone without any natural cause. All right. You may be experiencing this if all of a sudden you're having thoughts contrary to what you actually believe. I mean, I've seen people, and I've experienced it myself at times, where your faith is so strong. You know the Word of God. You're standing firm in the faith. You're standing on the Word of God. And all of a sudden, you get hit with this spiritual attack. And your, your mind starts twisting and turning. Your mind starts going in a different direction. You're thinking about things that are so strange, so dark, okay? And you need to rebuke it. I rebuke the spirit of unbelief in the name of Jesus off of your life. If you're suffering from this... Hallelujah. Devil, I rebuke you. Jesus rebukes you. Spirit of unbelief, go. Hallelujah. May that mind come into fullness, into soundness. 100% healing right now in the name of Jesus. 100% deliverance right now by the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let go of the mind right now, devil, in the name of Jesus. We pray. We believe for it. Hallelujah. You need only rebuke it. You need only rebuke the enemy and he must flee. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So don't think it's strange when your mind starts turning in a different direction. Just know it's the spirit of unbelief. Sometimes people start getting angry and irritable when they think or hear about Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Even as Christians, this is another sign of the spirit of unbelief. Satan wants us... or Satan wants the flow of the Holy Spirit to be stopped because he knows it's the way we defeat him. If we stay in the Spirit, we're much, much less likely to fall into temptation. We're much less likely to listen to his lies if we stay in the flow of the Holy Spirit. And that's where miracles happen. And the enemy sure doesn't want miracles happening. Because when miracles happen, they point to Jesus Christ. We say that was Jesus. And the enemy hates it. Okay, He wants to cut off the flow. Don't let him. Don't fall into that temptation. Don't let that sin uh, form a stronghold in your life. We need to cut it off at the root right now. If the church can't tap into the power of the ribbon, risen Christ, if the church can't tap into the power of the risen Christ, we're left wide open to all of his attacks. Let's ask God to search our hearts right now. Whatever you feel like is blocking you, whatever, is, whatever sin is getting in the way, whatever hindrance is getting in the way, we need to allow the Lord to search our hearts right now. I want to pray with you, and I'm going to repent with you. Uh, say a prayer of repentance, that we offer up anything that is hindering us, that is blocking us from the flow of the Holy Spirit right now. So pray with me. Repeat these words as I pray and repent with you. Father God, I ask that you take any hindrance 
I repent of bitterness. I repent of unbelief. I repent of doubt. I repent, I repent of anger. I repent of lust. I repent of, of pride. I repent of any evil work, any evil thing that I've done in thought or word or deed, Lord. Purify my mind, my heart, and my spirit in the mighty name of Jesus, that I may flow in the power of the Holy Spirit, that I may do the work that you have for me, Lord, in this earth, in these last days, Lord. I want to be used by you. I want to be a, a vessel for you. I'm marked with your Holy Spirit. I'm sealed with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Use me to honor and to glorify your name. May you teach me how to flow in your spirit. May you teach me, Lord God, how to stay in your spirit that I may not fulfill the lustful desires of the flesh. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I believe the Lord is going to teach you. I believe the Lord is going to instruct you. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the master teacher. So allow him to teach you. The word of God is going to teach you and instruct you. Your pastor um, and those who are in the fivefold ministry are going to teach you. But the Holy Spirit is the master teacher. He is going to bear witness of the truth. So allow him to come in. Invite him in and allow him to instruct you. So now I'm going to offer you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and then I'm going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit comes down, that you begin to speak in other tongues, okay, and it's a personal prayer language. Whatever you have heard about interpretation, or whatever it is, just there's a time for interpretation when you're in front of a congregation. There's a message that can be spoken in tongues, and there should be an interpretation for that. I'm talking about a different kind of tongues. I'm talking about a prayer language, where when you pray in these languages that are given you by God through the Holy Spirit, you're edified, okay? You're strengthened. You are exhorted. You're edified in your inner man through tongues. So first we're going to get you saved, and then we're going to get you filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit will lead you and teach you in all things. Now let's pray. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Repeat these words, but most importantly, believe them in your heart. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins on the cross. Forgive me, Lord, for my sins. Wash me and cleanse me by your Spirit and by your blood. I believe that Jesus rose from the grave. And that he is Lord. That he lives forevermore. I commit my life to you, Jesus. For all of my days, I will serve you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, you're now a son or a daughter of the Most High King. Hallelujah. And I want to get you filled with the Holy Spirit. But I can't do that. Jesus is the baptizer. So right now, I'm going to pray that you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And I believe that you will as well. I believe that you're going to be empowered with the Spirit. I believe that you're going to speak in tongues. You're going to prophesy. You're going to know things that you didn't know before. You're going to get a spiritual download at this time. All right, like your computer downloads things. This is a spiritual download you're going to receive from the Holy Spirit. I believe it in faith right now. Father God, release your Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Release, Father God, your Spirit, your glory, Father, fall. Right now, Holy Spirit, fall. Fill them, consume them right now, Lord. As, that they would speak in new tongues, Lord. As they pray in faith, as they believe in faith, as they open their hearts and their spirits to you right now, Lord God. Jesus, touch them with your own hand. That they may be filled with your spirit. That they may speak in new tongues. That they may prophesy. That miracles, signs, and wonders may be manifested that point to you, Jesus. Kita ramba shaba kito ramba se bokota ramba she sito ramba sata ramba yeto rombo kota ramba she ito ramba sata ramba yendo robo kota ramba yen sito ramba she bokota ramba se obo kata ramba she. Oh, the Lord's raising up last day warriors right now. Hallelujah. The Lord's raising you up as a last day warrior. The Lord's raising you up as a prophet. Hallelujah. That's for somebody. Hallelujah. The Lord's raising you up as an evangelist right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord's raising you up as a teacher right now in the name of Jesus to teach and equip the saints. Kito ramba bashito. Sabakata rabashi. Receive whatever it is the Lord's imparting to you right now. He knows what he's doing. I don't know everything that he's doing, but he knows what he's doing right now. Receive in the name of Jesus. Kito ramba bashito rambasi. 
kito ramba sata ramba yendo robo kabasan ibo konda rabashe bo sonda raba sata raba yen koba sanda rabashe oh yes lord thank you lord thank you lord for filling each one thank you lord for filling each one with the power of your spirit right now with your holy spirit purify purify may we be refined in fire lord may your fire fall and burn up every bit of impurity every bit of chaff in the name of Jesus right now, God, that we may flow in your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. I pray that you received an impartation, revelation, and instruction in the Holy Spirit tonight. God bless you.